Welcome, everybody. This is the first episode, the inaugural episode of The Breakdown with your host, Big Nick. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, if you saw us on Instagram or Twitter, however you reached out, thank you for the support. I figured it'd be fair if I gave you guys a little bit of a rundown, um, a little bit of a background check on myself first before we start. I am a student at the University of Alabama. I am going into my senior year there. And what happened was, this is actually funny because this started off as something that was told to me by somebody at my internship that I was going to be working on this summer. And due to all the coronavirus, uh, things going on, the in-office activities actually all got canceled. So that's unfortunate. But I decided, um, you know, why don't I just continue with the podcasts and the shows that we had planned and just release them, you know. And I, ba I went back and forth on if I was going to do it live, maybe on a streaming website, which I still may do in the future excuse me, and or if I was just going to make it on YouTube and, you know, keep it going there for however long, you know, if people want to just tune in or I'm going to actually timestamp my videos as well, so if you just want to log on and view one part of the show that you're interested in, that's cool too. So I figured why don't I just set it up where anyone can come and go. And I understand that this isn't, you know, going to be a, a huge following for for that sense, you know. Um, again, it's it's absolutely for the internship first, and second, it's for, well, maybe I'll get lucky, and maybe people will really enjoy the content that I'm giving on here as well, and on social media. So, yeah, back, and again, back to my background, um college student, you know, trying to get rolling in the media business, and the sports media business, specifically. So, that's enough about me. Um, again, I, we're open to all, you know, if you want me to cover a specific topic, again, we're kind of, this is all new, this is all figuring it out, so... If you have something you'd like me to talk about and cover, that'd be great. Uh, send it in, uh, whether it's in the comments on YouTube or my email, which will be posted as well. Or you could send us a message right over on Instagram, however you want to reach out. And we'd be happy to get rolling with that, you know. But uh, we're going to keep it simple today. You know, today is a shorter show. Um... We're looking at shows to be about the quicker ones, about 40 minutes. And the, the average time show is probably going to be about an hour. And then the bigger shows, when we have a lot of content to cover, a lot of stuff going on, news with sports, those, sport, those shows will probably be about an hour and 25 minutes because if we have to cover our main story or topic for about an hour... Um, Along with that, the last 20 minutes of every show, not exactly right now because of the fact that there's not a lot of live sports going on uh, at all. You know, we have UFC sometimes on the weekends, along with NASCAR, which we don't really cover on here unless something big is happening. And there's not a lot to be, you know, there's not a lot for Vegas to even be taking in. There's not a lot for us to be gambling on or interested in hearing about as far as gambling goes so you know there's not going to be that last 20 to 25 minutes of the show which is always going to be dedicated to giving you guys sports betting information for that day for that night along with daily picks you know that you might maybe stay away from this game maybe hit this game you know I think it's a sh you know a good angle so that's where we're at with that. Um, you know, it's uh, like I said, it's winging it. It's new. It's supposed to be fun. You know, and uh, so we'll hop right into it. Uh, this week we're gonna be, and actually for the next two weeks, quite frankly, 
it'll be a lot of predictions, you know, a lot of rankings like we're going to cover today, um, but then a lot of predictions as well as far as the uh, NBA playoffs go, uh, the MLB season, NFL upcoming season, and we'll cover hockey a little bit too, um, but yeah, it's going to be a lot of kind of predicting, a lot of rankings, and like I said, till we get live sports rolling. So that's where we're at with that. Um, and so, yeah, we'll dive right into it. So we have a rankings, a polling going on on Instagram, as you guys know. And I have ranked the top, not the top, all 32 quarterbacks in order, in my opinion, of where they rank and how they'll do this upcoming season. So... We'll get right into that. We'll start bottom to top. And I'll give you guys why I rank them here. What to expect out of them. You know. And then we can go along with that. As far as later on in the season. How I did predicting these things. And if you guys agree. If you guys disagree. And why. So. And then this week. Like I said. We'll be covering. We'll start with. We'll start with the NFL, and we'll be covering each division. You know, the four teams in that division, we'll really break them down, you know, one by one, each show. And that'll probably be, that's it for this week. That's what we'll go. And we're looking at, scheduling-wise, nothing set in stone. But we're looking at Monday through Thursday, I think. I think that's a fair uh, schedule because, you know, I don't want to over overdo the show, overwhelm anyone, anybody, but I think it's important to really stay consistent with it so that guys can check in, especially in this time, quite honestly, even though there's not a lot going on, you know, a lot of people are out of work, a lot of people don't have much to do, they're getting tired of the guys on TV, they're whatever, so if you feel you can connect with this show, we want to have a ton of content for you guys to tune in and watch. So that's going to be the schedule there. So about, you know, about four hours of content a week. You know, that's nothing crazy. So that's what we're looking at there. We're looking forward to it. It should be fun. And uh, like I said, let's just get rolling. We'll hop right into it. So I got the rankings here, of course. And um, first we have uh, number 32, Jared Stinham. You know, Stidham's the guy where, let's face it, Stidham's a guy who, he was in college, his junior year, he, you know, he had a great year. He was looking to be kind of, an, you know, the next thing, the next big, the next big thing. And his senior year, just, his senior year did not live up to potential. It didn't. Um, and... He got drafted by a great system, obviously, in New England, and got to learn from the best. So that'll help him, I believe. I, I do think that, along with the coaching there. You know, Belichick's going to win. Listen, everyone keeps saying, New England, might, they might tank for Lawrence. You know, it, guys, they're not. It's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible for New England to tank for Lawrence. With the personnel they have, it's simply it it's simply with that personnel, they are not going to be two and fourteen. They're not gonna be three and thirteen, and they're not gonna be four and twelve. They are not going to be a bottom tier team in the NFL. It's not gonna happen. It's impossible. With that personnel, with that coaching. So, with that being said, how do we rank them. Well, let's put it this way. They don't have a ton of weapons. Don't have a ton of weapons offensively. And the defense, de you know, they, they regressed a little bit. They did. But division's not that tough. You know? Um, and we're not going to get too much into division because, like I said, we're going to cover that on another show. Each division. But that division's not that tough. You know, you get the Jets twice, who I think are going to be better. But, again, not a top-tier team. You get Miami twice, going to be better, not top-tier. 
And then you have Buffalo, who's good. They're already there. They have a good thing set in stone. But again, it's Buffalo. It's not like I just said Kansas City or Baltimore or whoever. It's Buffalo. So there's room for New England to get some wins. Now, their schedule is very tough. So Stidham's going to have a, a rough road there, you know, as far as competition goes. Don't get me wrong. But I think he's going to fare just fine. I mean, again, it's it would be unfair, though. The reason he's at 32 is it would be completely unfair to put him over any other quarterback who has NFL experience. It'd be unfair. It would be unfair to put him because he's not a top recruit. That's what, like, someone would say, why isn't Joe Burrow at 32? Well, Joe Burrow's a top recruit. You know, he's the number one overall pick. He's expected to do many things. Jared Stidham's not. You know, there's talks about Brian Hoyer actually getting the job over Jared Stidham. So that just goes to show you what the expectations are. So he has to be at 32. He has to be. It's just fair. Number 31, Dwayne Haskins. (laughs) I'm not sold on Dwayne Haskins. I don't think Dwayne Haskins is going to be a great NFL talent. I think he's going to have a good career as a backup. I think he'll be a good backup in this league. But to say that Dwayne Haskins is going to turn a franchise around, it's, it's not It's not going to happen. It's not a lot of weapons in Washington. He looked lost out there at many times last year. Lost at many times last year. And again, you got two real tough teams in that division who are probably going to gobble up four wins right there against them and probably looking at a split against the Giants most likely. So... Again, there's not there's Dwayne Haskins was a great college quarterback. He fit that system perfectly. But if I'm the 40, 49, if I'm Washington, I'm really hoping and keeping my fingers crossed that Alex Smith gets healthy, which he probably won't. You know, he's he said to probably never play again, honestly. It's unfortunate. A lot of people think that, but If you're Washington, you hope Alex Smith gets healthy and you roll with that and rebuild around him for the time being until the right quarterback comes along in the draft or free agency. Um, Number 30, Gardner Minshew. Fan favorite, you know, um, fan favorite. He's, uh, (laughs) Gardner Minshew's a funny dude. Seems like a real cool dude. You know, people buy his jersey and... It's all over social media, and that's all awesome. And he was good last year. He really exceeded expectations last year. But how long is that gonna? How long is that gonna go for? Listen, if he has another great year this year, maybe. But a lot of people are predicting Jacksonville to be the worst team in the league in a pretty tough division, a division that never was tough in the past for the most part has gotten very tough now. And a lot of people predict them to be just really kind of messy out there. So it's going to be tough on him. It's going to be real tough on Garner Minshew. I don't think he's a bad quarterback, but to put him higher than 30, in my opinion, we haven't seen enough. We have not seen enough from this guy. And it's it's up to him if he's going to prove this wasn't a fluke. You know, if he wants to prove this isn't a fluke, I'm going to be a great quarterback, then that's on him. But it's going to be tough. And I kind of think it was a fluke. You know, you look at the games he won. It's A lot of them were real shot in the dark. Like, I'm talking clear-cut games he should have lost, and he willed them back, and that's... Hey, that's what great quarterbacks do. But how consistently can you do that? And that's to be seen. So we'll see. Um, number 29, a good quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater. He's he's a good quarterback, kind of been a career backup. But, you know, he stepped in with the Saints last year. He performed. He was He was awesome. And he was good in Minnesota. You know, he was good in Minnesota. 
when he had the starting job over there. But Teddy Bridgewater is a guy where, you know, it's kind of a felon type of thing as far as a starting quarterback. If you're looking to win a Super Bowl and you really want to bring in a veteran, you don't bring in Teddy Bridgewater. He's not that guy, you know. He's the guy where if you're rebuilding but you don't necessarily want to draft quarterback and you want to build your pieces around, but you want to stay competitive. You know, you want to stay competitive. You want to have a guy who's been there, done that. That's the type of guy Teddy Bridgewater is, and I think that's why he fits Carolina's system right now with what they're doing, you know, rebuilding. You know, he's got a great back behind him. He's got good receivers, new coach, but... A lot of missing pieces in arguably one of the toughest divisions in football now. So, not going to be a great season. And again, this isn't on the past. These are my predictions for this year's season. And I think it's going to be rough on Teddy. You know, quite honestly, I don't think he's going to be too good. I don't think he's going to win a lot of games. So, we'll move on to 28. Uh, Joe Burrow. <laughs> um not the not sold. Not the biggest Joe Burrow guy. Personally, I think that LSU team last year was the greatest college football team I may I may ever see in my lifetime. That was just the most dominant I there's no other way to put it. Unbelievable. But now he's in Cincinnati. You know, now <laughs> that system, that winning culture that you had it's all gone you're in Cincinnati you got a coach we don't even know if the guy can coach yet he's young he had a bad year last year players have not been too supportive you have a tough division the Cleveland D-line coming for you the Baltimore D-line coming for you the Pittsburgh D-line coming for you Tough work for Joe Burrow. We don't know if A.J. Green's going to be healthy. He, he never is, it seems like. And it seems like a lot on Joe Burrow's plate, to be honest. Um, a lot on his plate. He might overperform, but don't be surprised if they go 4-12. and 12. Really don't be. And I think if they win five games... And six would be ridiculous. They're not winning six games this year. But if they win five, it's kind of a good little success. And I know that sounds crazy, but take that, you know. if they Listen, if they upset Baltimore one week and whatever, and they win five games and they kind of have some spots where they shine, take that if you're a Cincinnati fan. Take, you know, look at the positives because this year's not – going to be great for them. It's not going to be. So I think people need to settle down on the Joe Burrow thing. He might be good, but you need pieces. This is the NFL now. Not everyone's a Russell Wilson type of guy or an Andrew Luck type of guy, honestly, who can kind of step into any situation and win, make it work, you know, whatever. Not everyone has that. I don't think Joe Burrow has that. He never, he never had that. He didn't have that the season before last year at LSU. You know, he needed a lot of weapons, a lot of things to go his way. We'll move on though. We'll see what happens. We'll we'll talk more about Joe Burrow when we do cover, you know, uh, his division. So I think you know in the AFC North. I I just I'm not completely sold. I'm not completely sold on him yet. But he hasn't taken a snap in the NFL. So we'll see. Number 27, Daniel Jones. He overperformed last year. He over he overperformed last year. It was a it was a really good year from Daniel Jones. And I have nothing I don't have a lot bad to say about him. He's got to hold on to the ball. The fumbles are they're going to kill him. That'll be the killer in his career. But that's I think that's pretty fixable. Listen, he was a rookie. He fumbled the ball a lot. You know, that that can happen. 
But as far as everything else, was he, did he stud out? No, I mean, he's, you know, he's at number 27 on my list. Do I think he's going to be unbelievable this season? No, but he overperformed. I actually, I think Daniel Jones, and I think most fans were kind of like, who is this guy? The Giants did it again. You know, who who, who are they drafting here? And Daniel Jones kind of came in and had some kind of a a quiet swag about him, but a swag nonetheless, where he said, I I don't care, I'm going to ball out. And he did that at times. Did he win a ton of games? No. But he really did step in at times and have some big moments. So, again, they're fixing the line. They have to fix the offensive line, the Giants. Um, And then after that, excuse me, they have some good receivers. You know, they have some good receivers, and we know they got, in my opinion, they got the best running back in football. Um, So there's, there's, pieces there for the Giants somewhat they're they're slowly starting to put it together again but it's going to take time he's still he's low on the list we can't expect too much out of him right now it would be unfair number 26 Tyrod Taylor listen Tyrod's a good quarterback and he you know He's been there. Listen, he took the Bills to the playoffs that year. And he can make, you know, he, he's a game manager. He's a game manager, Tyrod Taylor. Not going to go make the spectacular play. Not going to wow you. Not going to will a bad team into, you know, being great. But Tyrod Taylor is a good veteran quarterback. He is. And... He can win you some games. I. My problem with Tyrod Taylor is it seems like he keeps getting put into these same situations where, where the team knows he's not the guy. You know, we saw this in Cleveland. Tyrod was the starter. You know, Tyrod's the guy. Blah blah blah. We all knew that was garbage. We were just waiting for the inevitable, and that was Baker Mayfield to get his shot, and then he would continue to play on. It's the same thing we have here, you know. The Chargers brought him in for the pre- for camp, honestly, the preseason, and he'll probably start the first four games, five tops, and then it's the inevitable, you know. Uh, Justin Herbert, he's gonna get his shot, and I kind of, you know, Tyrod, kind of feel bad because he keeps getting brought in, and he knows it, but he keeps getting brought in as the starter. But he's not the starter long term, not even probably not even for the season. So, you know, but good quarterback nonetheless. And I think he'll do well, honestly. The Chargers have good weapons, you know, they have a good team. So I think he will do well, but, you know, he's at number 26. Number 25, Sam Darnold. (sighs) Ah. The Jets were tough last year when Darnold played. You know, they <laughs> the Jets were tough last season when Sam Darnold played and when Sam Darnold was healthy. Excuse me. And when he wasn't healthy, when he had mono, you know, he was out with the illness for a while. I believe they lost five straight weeks. It was like they couldn't, it it, it killed their whole season. And I will say that, though. The Jets were a tough team when Darnold played. Now, I don't know. He shows a lot of signs where we're like, wow, he can be good. And then he has weeks where, like the ghost week when he said, I'm seeing ghosts against New England. He has times like that where we're like, what have the Jets done? (laughs) You know, what have they done? Drafting this guy. Year three is going to be a big year for him. I don't think it's going to be great. I think the Jets are going to, again, be a tough team. I don't think they're a playoff team. And I think Darnold's going to struggle at times against those real top defenses with veteran defensive coordinators and coaching staff and players. I just don't see Darnold going over the top. I think he's going to be an 
kind of an average quarterback throughout his career. I really do. I think he has the weapons, but not consistently enough. You know, you, you can't – listen, in this league, you can just show glimpses of greatness. You can't do that. That's not how it works, especially in New York. Listen, if he was in Minnesota or Jacksonville or even Tennessee for that matter, you get away with more. You get away with glimpses more, smaller highlights. In New York, you're on the spotlight every single Sunday. Everyone's watching you. You know, there's no room for two good weeks here, two bad weeks here. A good week here, two bad ones. That's not going to fly. That won't fly. You know? Yeah, then Mark Sanchez is a perfect example of that. Went and took the Jets. Listen, the Jets haven't been in a Super Bowl since TVs were in black and white. And here's Sanchez. He gets them to the AFC Championship two straight years. Beats Peyton Manning in the playoffs. Beats Tom Brady in the playoffs. He has a bad season. And then the season after that was starting to have another bad season. And already people wanted him out of town, booing him out of the stadium, bench this guy. Bench this guy? What are you talking about? <laughs> Is Mark Sanchez a great quarterback? No. But bench him? They're booing him? It, I, I, New York's crazy when it comes to that. You know, it's like Philly. It's, it's, you want results. You need results. So, that's where Sam is, and good luck to him, but I don't know, not a great situation so far. Number four, number 24, Drew Locke. So, personally, I picked the Broncos to go to the playoffs last season. I think they have a very good team. I do, and it's tough to beat them in Denver, so tough to beat them in Denver. And the division, aside from the Chiefs, aside from the Chiefs, the division's not great. So, I thought they were going to be a lot better last year with Flacco, and they weren't. Lost a lot of heartbreakers. They did lose a lot of heartbreakers. Last second field goals, you know, uh, the first three out of four weeks were, like, ridiculous as far as heartbreaks go. But they didn't. They struggled. That's fine. They had some good spots, though. And then, when they really had good spots was when Drew Locke stepped in. Now, to me, this kind of could be like a Gardner Minshew thing. I think he has more talent than Gardner Minshew. I actually thought in last year's draft, Drew Locke was the the best quarterback in the draft. Call me crazy, and I know that's kind of weird because I have him so low here. But I, what I'm saying is, I won't be shocked if Drew Locke's a top 15 quarterback this year, I will not be surprised. Because I think he has weapons. He's got a great home field. I think he has good coaching. And I think he has good talent. Drew Locke's a guy where I go off of, you know, what I really base my predictions off of is competition. And Drew Locke's a guy who played in the SEC, you know, played at Bama, you know, Big games like that, tough games, top defenses, and did well. He didn't win a ton of games, but he did well. And they finished the season actually ranked. You know, they weren't ranked all year, but when that season ended, they got into a good bowl game, they were ranked. So he was tough. He was a good quarterback, and... Again, that competition, I think, translates a lot of times, not always, but it translates when you get put into the right system with the right guys. And Drew Locke was awesome last year. He was awesome when he stepped in. So I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a top 15 guy. My problem with him is, is it going to be that consistent? A lot of times we see a drop off. We see a guy who is amazing, and then we get some film on them, defenses find their weaknesses, and all of a sudden, not the same guy. I'm worried that might happen to Drew Locke. You know, that, that's my worry with him, is, is he 
going to have a big drop off next year. And that would be a shame because I think he is a great talent. But we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens with Drew Locke. Again, not surprised if he moves up that board. But right now, 24 is fair. You know, what does he have? Four starts in his NFL career? There's a lot of guys that I need to put above Drew Locke before I can say, you know, he's going to be great. 23, Ryan Fitzpatrick. You know, Fitz has been around. He's bounced around. He's had seasons where people want him to win MVP. <laughs> and he's been seasons where he he, he shouldn't he doesn't even look like he should touch the field. I like Fitz. Now, we all know Fitzpatrick, in a sense, is like Tyrod Taylor this season because it's inevitable that Tua Tagovailoa is the, you know, he's the future for Miami. That's why they drafted him so high. You know, we all know what he did at Alabama. Problem with him is staying healthy, of course. We all know that. Uh, that's one of the knocks against him. But we're not going to talk about Tua. We'll get into that when we do cover the AFC East and when we do cover the Dolphins. But as far as Fitz goes, he's going to be fine. You know, he's going to be fine. He's going to light it up. He might throw for 400 yards and throw four interceptions. You know, he's a fun guy to watch. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch. Because he just slings it, man, you know. You're not going to get too much into Fitz because he's such a veteran. He's He's been around for so long. We know what we're getting with Fitz. I don't need to tell you guys, you know. But he, last year, did good with nothing. And Brian Flores, he's got a good culture going there in Miami. He's a good head coach, it looks like. And they're going to be better. And I think Fitz is going to do just fine. Quite frankly, Miami might catch themselves. They might catch themselves in a wild card race midway through the year. And Tua may not have the opportunity to start. You know? Because if, listen, if they're... They're like five and five, a game out. Fitz is playing well. They're not going to bench Fitz. So that's where I'm at with that. But we'll move on from Fitz because he's, like I said, been around forever. I don't need to tell you about Ryan Fitzpatrick. Number 22. And this is an interesting one because we actually don't even know if he's going to start. It's Nick Foles. Now, I think Nick Foles is a great dude. He says all the right things. I root for the guy. I really do. And I personally think, and you guys actually agreed when we did our poll on Instagram about who should get the start this year, Foles or uh, Trubisky. And, you know, it's, it's pretty simple to me. Foles is a Super Bowl champ. He's a Super Bowl MVP. It's that simple. It worked in in Philly, we all know. But then he goes to a team like Jacksonville, and it's like, what do you want the guy to do? This isn't a Super Bowl caliber team. Of course he looked bad. Now, don't get me wrong. He looked real bad. But what do you expect here? You expect greatness from the guy? It's not going to happen. So... This is a team now, I think it's interesting because if he goes in there and plays like he did in Philly, he's going to be even better. They can compete. I know this is crazy, and I know I have him kind of low at 22, partly because partly because we don't even know if he's going to start, but he can go make a playoff run. I really believe that. We're looking at a defense. That Chicago defense is nasty. They are a oh they are a top defense in the league still. And you put a guy like Foles on the center and he performs half the way he did in Philly. Watch out, you know. And I know it's tough division, but watch out, man. the The Bears can be back quickly. They can be back quickly. They have I I think Matt Nagy is a pretty good head coach. They have a good coach again. 
a tough home field. It's tough to go to Chicago and win. And they, they have pieces. That defense is absolutely studded out. So watch out for a guy like Foles. You know, we know what he's capable of both ways. We know he's capable of shining and being just this <clears throat> this monster. And we also know he can really struggle and struggle to be healthy as well. So, honestly, if you're a Trubitsky guy and you're worried about and Foles gets the starting job week one, you know, don't be too worried. He might not make it through 16 games. You know, Mitchell probably gets some starts here and there. But assuming Nick stays healthy and assuming Nick is half what he was in Philly, they're going to win games. You know, they're going to be a tough, they're going to be a tough group. Number 21, Josh Allen. I like the kid. I think he fits that system. I think he's a good game manager. He's mobile. He's a lot more mobile than he gets credit for. But as far as a pure quarterback, I don't know how great he is. I don't know if he's the reason why the Bills are going to be good this year. I don't know if he's the reason why the Bills were good last year. You know, I don't know if he's the reason. And he has a good thing going, and I do think Buffalo is going to win the division there. Spoiler alert on the AFC East. I think Buffalo is going to win the division again. Not again, but win the division. But is the reason Josh Allen? You know, I'm looking at the names around him. I don't want to spoil the names I put above him, but you guys saw it on Instagram. I look at the names around Josh Allen. Could they not win with Kirk Cousins? Of course they could. Could they not win with Ryan Tannehill? Of course they could. Could they not win with Nick Foles healthy? Or Ryan Fitzpatrick? They would probably do just fine. And that's why I ha- I can't put him too high. He hasn't been that difference maker, that game changer yet that we're looking for. And he still can. He's He's a baby. But that's... To be in the top 20 and beyond, you have to have that kind of knack. I don't believe he has that yet. So, we'll see what he does this season. Looking forward to it, actually, because I, I that's another team I do root for. And I think I actually think that head coach might be the best in the league. He's, he's awesome. That's a guy who finds a way to win. But now the personnel's there as well. You know, they brought in Diggs. And, you know, the the defense is tough. Another team with a great home field. You know, even Brady's said it his whole career. It's tough going to Buffalo. No one likes going up to Buffalo. Especially after week 10. It's tough. So, we'll see. Um, number 20, Ryan Tannehill. Um, Ryan Tannehill, I'll start by saying this. You know... He's overpaid. He didn't. He's overpaid, but he earned it. Great businessman, you know. But he's overpaid. He got, but he got, he got that check, and good for him, man. I hope it works out. They got good receivers, you know. Brown is good. Obviously, they probably have one of the best running backs in the league. Derrick Henry is a monster. But here's a team. I worry it was a fluke. I really worry it was a fluke. Because the same way I can make an argument that they're the best team in the division, I can also make the argument that they're the third best team in the division. You know, I can make an argument that Houston's better. I can make an argument, absolutely, that the Colts are better. And that's what worries me. Is this going to be a fluke? Because we saw last year, you know... Tannehill didn't put the team on his back. Henry put the team on his back, Derrick Henry. And there's nothing wrong with that, but to pay a guy what you paid Tannehill, man, he's got to be uh he's got to be the one. And I don't know if he is. But again, Tennessee's not one of those 
big market teams and, you know, national attention and TV games. So, listen, they get a guy like Tannehill to play like that. They're like, cool, pay him. We're winning, you know. Got a good defense. We got a good coach. You know, Rabel's a good coach. He knows what he's doing. He's been in good systems his whole career. They're like, we got a a running back who's a beast, but we don't know how long running backs are going to last, obviously. Sign Tannehill. Get him him to stay. We'll move on from Mariota. It didn't work. And, you know, let's go from there. I worry it's a fluke, but Tannehill, let's see what he does this year. You know, see what he does. Number 19, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> Listen, Kirk Cousins is a guy who's just, uh, he's bounced around a little bit. Well, he hasn't bounced around too much, actually, at all, but it always just feels like he's got a chip on his shoulder, and I have to say, rightfully so. I think it's rightfully so, to be honest, because Kirk Cousins has never been that difference maker. He can't win on Monday Night Football. He can't win on Sunday Night Football. You don't look to him in the big moment. He doesn't step up in the big moment. He never really has. His whole career has just been iffy, very iffy, very average. And here you are. He has now the thing with the thing with the upcoming season is, and with last season, honestly, he's got a very good team around him. He's got personnel. Mike Zimmer, awesome coach. My opinion, the best. Right now. Mike Zimmer, awesome coach. Dalvin Cook, unbelievable running back. Offensive line, great. Kyle Rudolph, awesome. I mean, how much more? Stefan Diggs last year, obviously he's gone now. But Adam Thielen, these are guys who are very good players. I mean, these are like top, top guys. And... Along with that, a good defense. And what did, what did they get? I mean, and I'm not trying to put everything, but let's take last season for example. I'm not saying last season make or breaks his career. But last season was the farthest he's ever gotten. And where was that? They got a win at New Orleans in the first round of the playoffs. Okay. Well, it's not the first time New Orleans hasn't lived up to their Super Bowl expectations, let's be honest. Then they went to San Francisco the next week. They look lost. It wasn't even really a game. So, you know, for me to make, for me to put Kirk Cousins over some of these other names, I'm not ready to do that as far as the upcoming season. Um, all it takes is a couple injuries. You know, if Thielen gets hurt this year or Cook or, you know, can Kirk really put that team on his back and say, all right, guys, rally around me. Let's do this. Probably not. You know, they're probably going to be in some some big trouble. So, all right, we'll move on, though. We'll move on to Kyler Murray. Not the biggest Kyler Murray fan, but he played well. He did great last year, and now you add Hopkins to the mix Hopkins is a star receiver, man. I mean, they're they're making moves. They're looking. They're making moves. They're looking to be a contender. A lot of people think they're going to be the dark horse this year. A lot of people genuinely think that they're going to be a playoff team. I personally don't. I think they are in the toughest division in football. And again, not the best home crowd. Not a not a great defense, really, but they're, excuse me, they are making moves. And when I look at Kyler Murray, he fits. He fits well there. That's why I have him so high. He fits. He makes it work. Fans like him. I think he's going to do awesome with DeAndre Hopkins. I think that's a, I think that's a very good fit for him. And we'll see what happens there. 
But again, not to spoil anything, but the NF we'll cover it when we talk about the NFC West, but <laughs> 49ers, Seattle, Rams. Cardinals kind of get lost there. You know, you, you kind of get lost in the mix there a little bit. So, it's going to be tough on Kyler. It's going to be real tough now. Now there's film on him. Weaknesses get spotted. You know, it's, it, it was kind of on the fly last year, it felt like. It was kind of just making it work. That Those days are over. Now let's see what he's really got in his second year. But we'll move on. 17, Baker Mayfield. Listen, these next two, 17's Baker, 16's Derek Carr. They're similar to me in a way. Baker kind of had that season where it looked like, wow, this was the right pick. First overall, Cleveland's back. They found their guy. Now it's kind of like, (laughs) uh-oh. Too many commercials, maybe, you know, maybe too many outspoken things with the media, you know. And I'm not trying to go after the guy, but because I kind of like Baker, but... Man, that team you had last year, you had a back. You had Jarvis Landry. You had Odell Beckham. You had a tight end. You had a pretty good defense, quite honestly. Oh, man, I. You, you got rid of you, Jackson. That was the problem at first. Everyone said he was the problem. You finally had, you were loaded. People are putting in bets on you guys in Vegas. The Browns are back. They might win the Super Bowl. Ugly. It was an ugly year. And the reason I am solo now is because it's going to get tougher. Last year it was your shot. Big Ben gets hurt week one. You know, the Bengals, well, they win two games. You know, you you had a shot to, to win. To win games. You beat Baltimore. There's one out of the way. You beat the best team in the league last season. You beat them early on in the year. At Baltimore. You beat them at Baltimore. That was your shot last year to, to make noise. This year, Big Ben's back. Bengals are going to be better with Joe Burrow. The Ravens found their man. I mean, Lamar Jackson's, you know... Come on, we no one thought he was going to be this good, quite honestly, did we? And now you just you look at what the what's going on there. No one's happy. There's rumors about Odell getting traded. There's rumors, you know, can what's the coaching situation in Cleveland? And it just becomes a whole problem now. Where, uh oh, you know, Cleveland. <laughs> if by week eight, week eight, if Cleveland's um. I don't want to say, I don't want to say they'd be too bad, but if they're three and five, if they're three and five, and the Steelers are doing good, and Baltimore and and Burrow's looking good, and say he's like two and four right behind them. <laughs> I mean, watch out. That's gonna be rough. Not two and four, two and six. I meant, but that's gonna be chaos in Cleveland. No one's gonna be happy. No one. 16, Derek Carr, same situation. He had that year. He had that year where we were like, wow, Derek Carr is the dude. A lot of people think if he doesn't get hurt that season in week 16, that a lot of people think they were going to compete with New England that season for the AFC. They were going to go to the Super Bowl. I kind of did too. They were good. They had it working. Jack Del Rio, he coached out of his mind, Derek Carr. It, it all worked. Everything worked. I believe the back was Latavius Murray. He worked. Amari Cooper. It worked. Everything worked that the Raiders did that season. Derek Carr gets that injury. He's been a shadow of himself ever since. And I hate to say that. Derek Carr is awesome. I root for Derek Carr. But now we don't know if he's even the guy. You know, a lot of people say it's time for a change. They move to Vegas, 
paid Gruden all that money. A lot of people say, let's move on from Carr. You know? And I don't think it's necessarily time to move on from Carr. Because, you know, not to to throw away a season before it starts, but no one's beating out Kansas City in that division anyway this year. I think you roll with Carr for now. See if he can come back to what he was that season a couple years back before the injury. And you build around him and create a culture in Vegas. But a lot of people disagree. They don't even know if he's the guy now. So, you know, we'll see. See what happens there. Not a ton of weapons. Kind of a surprise in the draft. And we'll cover the Raiders later on, not to get into different positions. But kind of a surprise drafting Ruggs over Judy. Um... But we'll see how that works out. And now, actually, we hear there's already an injury. He was helping his friend move into an apartment. I mean, it seems very uh, very Raider-esque, you know? A lot of just just problems off the bat. Not great stuff to hear. But, listen, they're building a new culture over there. We'll see what happens. No one really knows. The Chiefs are the king of that division. Probably going to be like that for this year, the next, and probably the year after. Patty Mahomes isn't going anywhere, but we'll move on. I think they should roll with Derek Carr for now. See what happens, you know, build around them for now. Number 15, Jared Goff. I can't put a guy who's been to a Super Bowl any lower than 15. Well, that's not true, but he really played great a season ago, and it's not like he played, oh, like, in 2015, he was amazing, no, this was very recent, this was two years ago, he was in the Super Bowl against Tom Brady, and tied for four quarters, and, you know, listen, Jared Goff, I think, is a good quarterback, who's not very consistent, you know, he, but... I think he has, but more consistent, more consistent. He's good more than bad. He's good more than bad. It's not like you get three bad weeks and then a great week. No, it's like you get three good weeks and then like an awful week or two. And then you get two more like real good weeks. Like, wow, Jared Goff looks good. And then you get a week where he's like, oh, here we go again. And then, you know, between that and then. One game, the defense lets him down. It all comes together where he's kind of never, not never, but he's not looking, he's not like going to win 14, 13 games, you know, 12 games. But he can have a very good year, I think, and the Rams can win 10 games this year. I don't see why that's crazy. I know they lost Gurley, but they have weapons. And I think Jared Goff's a good quarterback. I think Sean McVay is a good coach. I think people started to figure him out a little bit, started to figure him out a little bit. Kind of like Matt Nagy in that first year. But Sean McVay knows what he's doing. He's a good coach. And I think the spotlight got to them a little bit. That Super Bowl spotlight. That kind of hangover period. Where they kind of just thought it was a given. And all of a sudden the 49ers come out of nowhere. And you know the Cardinals are tough. And that division is just. We know Seattle's always tough. And then it was kind of like too late by like week 14 or 13 you know there's only a couple games left and they're like looking up at the play at the playoffs and they didn't have enough time to to get in so they kind of caught up with them quick I think they're going to be back though this year not not into the Super Bowl not even necessarily the playoffs because the NFC is so loaded but they're going to be a good team. You're not going to see them win six games this year, I don't think. I think they're a 500 team. I think Jared Goff's a, a good average quarterback. And they'll be back. Give it a year or two. The Rams, will they'll figure it out. I believe they'll figure it out. Number 14 will stay in the NFC West. Jimmy Garoppolo. Listen, this whole persona that Jimmy G goes away in the fourth quarter... There were games last year. I remember watching him at New Orleans in the regular season. The Saints score a touchdown with two minutes left. 
and it looks like, and it's at New Orleans, the place is going nuts, and, you know, Breeze, you know, and it, it looks like just, it, the game's over, and Jimmy G takes them up right off the field, two-minute drill, they beat them, you know, it, there were games last year, and times in his career where he has stepped up in the fourth, in big moments, but he gets this, this persona, this, this idea about him that he doesn't, and I know, Listen, the Super Bowl last year looked bad. It looked bad. He led the whole game in the big moment. You know, he had the overthrow, the game-winning catch it would have been late in the game. So, I'm, I'm, listen, it looked bad. I'm, I'm not denying that, but Jimmy G is a top 15 quarterback. He is. There's a reason why Brady wanted him out when he was backing him up. There's a reason why the 49ers... Went from the season before when Jimmy G got hurt quickly in the season. They had Nick Mullins starting, and they, you know, Nick Mullins did okay, but they weren't like a playoff team. There's a reason why in one year you make a jump from not good to decent to the Super Bowl to leading in the Super Bowl against Patrick Mahomes for the whole game, quite honestly. They dominated that game doesn't just happen with an average quarterback. doesn't just happen with whoever, you know. Jimmy G is a good quarterback. He's top 15 quarterback. And, you know, I think people got to realize that. Yes, the defense was nuts. But that's not Jimmy G's fault. Like, they, you know, he listen, everywhere Jimmy G's gone, he's won. He won in New England. He's winning the Niners. You know, he's only made a handful of starts in his career, and he's already got – um an NFC championship under his belt. So let's relax with that a little bit, please. Um, number 13, Phillip Rivers. He's going to be good this year. The Colts are going to be good. I think they're going to win the division. Spoiler alert. Um, he's going to be good. He's going to be good. And that offensive line is loaded. They got a good back and, and Mac behind them. They got good receivers, good coaching. The, the Colts are a good team. Listen, I could see the Colts going 12-4. and four. And I know that's higher than a lot of people have them. I can see the Colts winning a lot of games this year. The Colts are going to be good. Um, how will they do in the playoffs? <laughs> it's Rivers. Not to, not to, you know, go at Rivers right now, but he's been a guy who hasn't looked great in the playoffs his whole career. Um, but it's a new system. It's a new completely. It's a new franchise, new location, everything. So we'll see what happens. I don't. Um, I'm not ready to say they're going to be a Super Bowl contender. I but they're right outside that bubble. Colts are going to be good. Colts are going to be a good team. I don't have to tell you too much about Philip Rivers. He's been around forever, but. That's going to be fun to watch over there. And the turnovers will be, you know, listen, he turned the ball over a ton last year. Ridiculous amount. With that offensive line in Indy, that's going to change. You know, that's going to change. It's going to have time to throw back there. Trust me, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a barrage of turnovers. Um, Number 12, Matthew Stafford. One of my favorite quarterbacks to watch, honestly. I love watching Matt Stafford. Not a playoff guy, you know. Never has a ton of weapons. Not a great system. Not a good system. Probably not a great head coach. This might be his last year. Tough division, honestly, you know. But Matt's a guy, he's going to put up numbers, and he's going to keep you in it. You saw even last year, the Lions were in it. They were in the race early until Matt got hurt. Once Matt went down, they couldn't win a game. David Blau and, you know, I, I can't even remember the other guy who came in, but didn't win a game. I mean, the Lions were lost. So it's it's that simple to me. I mean, Stafford's going to keep your team alive. He's going to keep you in it. But at the end of the day, 
he doesn't have there's no weapons he's got no weapons there they're moving on from Darius Slay the coaching isn't good Matt's gonna have a rough year but Matt's a really good quarterback so I have him in the top 15 anyway regardless of wins and losses this upcoming year Matt's you know Matt's going to He's going to perform. He's going to put up numbers. He's going to keep you in games. He's probably even going to get you wins that you shouldn't have gotten and keep you in the race. So, we'll move on. Number 11. We are going to hear this name a lot on this show. And if you're a huge fan of this guy, um, you might not love the show. You might not. Number 11 is... Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott, that's the name we're going to hear a lot on this show, and again, if you love yourself some Dak Prescott, it's probably not the show for you, you're not going to love the show, you're not, Um, he's a good quarterback, and he's nothing more, that's it, he's a good quarterback, he's nothing more. He doesn't step up in the big games. We've seen it time and time again. That the Philly game last year, the biggest game of his life maybe, you know, just every piece around him, Zeke, that O-line. Oh, my. Omari Cooper gets brought in. Randall Cobb. Witten. Every, I know he's old, but every, just, you had the world and just Bad. Don't even score a touchdown. They didn't score a touchdown in that game. Thanksgiving. You know, the world's watching. Huge game for Dallas in the standings. Huge game. You know, it's Thanksgiving. Buffalo's coming into town. They open up. Great drive to start the game. Touchdown, Dallas. 7 0. They didn't score again until the fourth. They got blown out. Blown out <laughs> by Josh Allen and the Bills. Dak just, and we will get more into Dak. We will get more into Dak Prescott. But here is a guy where I cannot put him in the top 10. Quite honestly, I don't know how he's in contact, contract talks <laughs> right now for it to be the highest paid quarterback. Highest paid quarterback in the NFL. What are you talking about? Highest paid? Highest paid quarterback in the NFL you want to be. Now, it also has, the market plays into it also. Don't get me wrong. And people will disagree with this, but it's true. If a small market team gets their hands on a guy like Dak, you know, because Dak is a good quarterback. They get they get their hands on Dak, they'll pay him. Great, we found Dak. Kind of like the Titans did with Tannehill. It's like, great, we found a guy. He's capable of winning some games. He's not going to hurt us. He's, you know, we're, we'll pay him. Great. When you're Dallas, when you're Dallas, you have, you know, you're the national spotlight. You're America's team. All those Super Bowls, Jerry Jones. You're not paying Dak Prescott to be the highest quarterback in the league. That's terrible. And Jerry knows this, and that's why he brought in Andy Dalton. That's why he brought in Andy Dalton. So, okay, you want to throw a fit, Dak? You're not going to play unless you're the highest paid quarterback in the NFL? That's fine. I'll bring in a three-time pro bowler. I'll bring in a guy who's been to the playoffs, what, four seasons? Five, maybe? I'll bring in Andy Dalton for nothing. Andy Dalton is playing for nothing, essentially. One-year deal. You know, Everyone knows what that's for. Everyone knows the reason. That's not Jerry saying... Oh, let me go get a backup quarterback. You know, let me let me go uh, solidify our quarterback depth chart. No, that that's that's leverage. That's playing the game with Dak. They're playing games, and Dalton's the perfect guy for that right now. Perfect guy for that. One because of the contract. If Dak doesn't want to play, fine. We have Dalton. And two, if Dak's struggling, listen. If Philly's six and two going into Week Nine. And Dallas is two games out. I don't know. They're four and four. It's like the city's going to be on fire. It's going to be crazy. Like, bring in Andy. 
And you know Mike McCarthy will do that. Mike McCarthy's won a Super Bowl. He's not going to put up with average play. Put Dalton in. You know, let's make a change. That's what that's what Andy Dalton's brought in for. But uh, no, I don't think Dak's going to be great this year. Uh, that's why he's at eleven. He'll be good because of all the pieces they have. He'll be good because of all the pieces they have. He'll be good because they play the Giants twice. That's going to be two wins. He'll be good because they play Washington twice. That's going to be two wins. And he'll probably split with Philly. Philly's nothing special either. Don't get me wrong. I mean, again, Dak's capable of winning games. But (laughs) come on now. Highest paid in the league. We'll get more to that. We'll get we'll talk about Dak so much on this show. It's not even worth getting too much into right now. But yeah, he'll be good next year. Of course he'll be. Look at that team. Look at that line. Look at Zeke. Mari Cooper. Mike McCarthy. He'll be good. The fact they didn't make the playoffs last year is disgusting. I know it's not all on Dak. It's not all on Dak, but you're the quarterback. I'm sorry. You're the quarterback. Carson Wentz, the opposite. Last year, everyone went down for Philly. They had nothing. You might as well play with varsity football players at that point. Line depleted, no receivers, no backs. Carson Wentz was... how I don't even know how they were winning games. And then the biggest game, Dallas comes into Philly. The Eagles blow them out. Made a joke of it. I Carson Wentz put that team on his back. Dak Prescott had everything around him, had all the pieces. And what did he do? Not just in that game, what did he do all season? He didn't beat anyone spectacular. He didn't beat any of the top teams in the league. Not to mention he lost to teams that weren't even good. He lost to team he lost at Jets. You know, he lost that Jets. That's a bad loss, Dak. You can't have that happen. That cannot happen. And it, listen, everyone's going to have a bad loss once in a while. But you want to be the, you want to be the highest paid quarterback in the league. It's not a bad loss when you're the 13th best quarterback, 15th best, quite frankly, 9th best. It, it's, that's not the worst thing. You want to be the top paid quarterback in the league, Dak? You can't go to Jets and lose. You can't lose by... You can't not score a touchdown in the biggest game of the season. You can't go to New England, not score a touchdown. You can't get blown out on Thanksgiving in front of the country. These are all huge games in the standings. And then you finish, what, 500? Didn't make the playoffs. You don't make the playoffs with that team. You don't make the playoffs with that team... Last season, when the division was weak, when are you going to make them? When are you going to win? Because it's only getting better. Like I said, the Giants are building. Washington's a mess. But the Giants are building. The Eagles are building. The Eagles are going to be healthy now. I don't know. I it's, Listen, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Number 10, Carson Wentz. I kind of just covered him in that small spiel there. <laughs> but um, Carson Wentz is a good quarterback. Listen, it's kind of like the Derek Carr thing in a way, to a lesser degree. I mean, Wentz had his year, MVP type season, and we all know what happened. He got hurt. Foles came in. They won the Super Bowl. A lot of people say they would have won anyway. Um. Carson Wentz is a good quarterback. It's pretty simple. It's it's a pretty simple, it's quick on Carson Wentz. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on him. Are you going to stay healthy? If you're going to stay healthy, Philly's going to be good. If he's going to be healthy in the playoffs, they're going to be tough to beat. If he's not, they're in trouble. You know, Jalen Hurts is the backup, right? Good luck. I mean, you know, hey, Jalen Hurts is good. But this is, uh, (laughs) Jalen Hurts is a guy who didn't, you know, he couldn't start. He lost his job at Alabama against SEC defenses. 
goes to the Big 12, where the weakest defenses are in the Power 5, as we know, and he studs out. Yeah, great. And then he gets drafted. Again, great. I mean, that's awesome, but it's not, uh, this is the NFL now, so we'll see how that's, um, gonna play out, but sorry, I'm a little, still a little worked up about Dak wanting the most money in the NFL, I, uh, need to settle down here, (laughs) but, um, number nine, Ben Roethlisberger, again, now we're getting to guys who have been around for the most part, not, you don't have to spend too much time on guys like this, I see a resurgence coming from Big Ben this year, I don't think um, listen, last year the Steelers won eight games and they they looked like a lock to make the playoffs late in the year and they lost the last three games of the season, I believe. But they went on that bad losing streak. I don't know what that was. But that's with Mason Rudolph and Duck Hodges under center. Let's put Big Ben behind center now. Let's see how they do. I mean, again, they won eight games. Mason Rudolph and Doug Hodges. Credit to Mike Tomlin and the defense. Unbelievable. Now we bring Big Ben back. I think they get two games better. I think they should go 10-6 and six and beyond. But I think they get at least two games better. How do they not? How do you not get two games better? Quite frankly, I mean, you, Mason Rudolph, Doug Hodges, this isn't rocket science. Upgrade to Big Ben. Ben stays healthy. You're two games better. You're two games better. So, we'll see. Let's see how that goes. Number eight, Matt Ryan. If you dive into Matt Ryan's numbers, he hasn't gotten any worse since that Super Bowl season. He hasn't. It's just, it hasn't worked in Atlanta. And I don't, I don't put that all on him. Now, he has weapons, don't get me wrong. Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, but... Defense has just been so bad. It's like the numbers he has to put up to stay in games is sickening. Um, I can't put that all on Matt Ryan. Bringing in Todd Gurley this season, though, I I think Atlanta's going to be tough. Again, that division, I don't know if Atlanta's going to be able to sneak in like the playoffs, but they're going to be tough. They're going to be a a tough team. Matt Ryan's going to have another good year. He's consistent. Is he the best quarterback in the league? No, but he's consistent. So, it's simple on him. Again, guy who's been around, been to a Super Bowl. He's not in the playoffs every year, and that's a knock on him. And again, I don't think he is a, a top five quarterback, but he'll be good. You know, he'll be good again. And if the defense figures it out, you'll be watching them in the playoffs. Number seven, Deshaun Watson. I love Deshaun Watson. I wasn't sure about him at first as a quarterback. He is like, he's so fun to watch. He's such a good quarterback. He gets wins. It, it He wins with anything. And he's done it his whole life since Clemson. And, you know, that's the guy you want. When you draft, you want Deshaun Watson. Like Dabo Sweeney said, you pass on this guy, you're passing on Michael Jordan. I don't know if that's a fair comparison to MJ, but it's I see what he's saying. This was like a complete hit for Houston. Complete hit. When you draft quarterback, you want what they got. You want Deshaun Watson. That that's what you look for when you draft a quarterback. He says the right things. He's mobile. He stays healthy. He's a good passer. He wins. That's what you want. End of story. He wins some playoff games. Listen, <laughs> I mean, uh, they they shouldn't have beat Buffalo in the first round last year, and they won. And that was under Sean. He was awesome in the second half of that game. Then the next week against Kansas City, I, they led. It's like funny. It's like a video game number to even say this, but I believe they led twenty eight nothing. I mean, that's like, and they got blown out, blown out in the game. But it's just funny. It goes to show you, like, 
Deshaun Watson is going to be there. He's going to be good this year. Everyone says they lost uh, Hopkins, DeAndre Hopkins. I, I don't care. I don't care. Quite. I, I mean, really, De, De, Deshaun Watson wins. He's a winner. That's what it is. You think? You think Deshaun? Deshaun. You think DeAndre Hopkins is the reason why Deshaun Watson was, has been having a great career? Why he wins all the time? You know, why he's unstoppable back there? No. No, of course not. That's not, no. <laughs> it's because Deshaun Watson makes receivers great. He does. That's the truth. He makes them great. I mean, it's it's clear. The guy's an awesome quarterback. But he's going to have another good year. The defense is always tough over there. But again, tough division, you know. Same argument I can make for Houston, I can make for Tennessee. I could say I could make arguments that they're the best team in the division. I could also make arguments that they're the third best. So see what happens there. Number six. Number six is a tricky one. This is this is one I'm expecting the pushback for. Lamar Jackson. He's not a top three quarterback. I'm sorry. Lamar Jackson is not a top three quarterback. Last year, you're not going to see that happen again in Lamar's career. I'm sorry, you're not. You're not. The Titans were just the first in the in the playoffs. The Titans were just the first team to figure it out. Now, watch how everyone falls into place. He'll be good. I'm, I put the guy at six. I'm not saying he's bad. He's going to have a good year. But... You're not going to see that again. That was video game-like. They used to just walk up and down the field on teams. That's not going to happen. I'm sorry. If you're the biggest Lamar guy, don't don't expect me to say he's going to put up astronomical numbers. Don't expect me to say he's going to be the MVP this season. He's not. He's not going to be. I'm sorry. He's not going to be. It's that simple. I mean, listen... Tennessee, it's different when it's the regular season. So, yeah, he might win 11 games. He might win 12. But when you get to the playoffs, you have to be able to pass. You have to be able to put the team on your back. You have to be able to take over a game. Lamar cannot do that at the NFL level. It's that simple. He can't. And he's shown that in his first season when he got to the playoffs. And he's shown that in his second season when he got into the playoffs. I don't know how to be more clear. We can keep watching. We could see what happens this year in the playoffs. But he's not going to win the Super Bowl. I promise you that. Good quarterback. Completely exceeded expectations. If he never has another good year in his career, he's exceeded expectations already. What he did last year alone. But you're not going to see that again. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen at this level. The coaching's too good. Defenses are too good. Too athletic. Watch everything fall into place. You'll see. I mean, you, you will see. If you haven't seen already. But we'll get more in depth on it. I know I'm being very bland with these predictions and kind of just giving a, an opinion. We're going to dive more into this stuff when we break down each team and each division. Number five, Tom Brady. Um, I, You know, Brady, it's the same. To me, it's like the Roethlisberger, the Roethlisberger argument. The Bucks would they win seven, eight games last year? Brady makes them three games better. That's the way I look at it. From Jameis Winston to Tom Brady, you get about three games better. Those tight games that you lost, you're now going to win. The games you won, you're still going to win with Brady. You know, and that that's that's where I'm at with that with that situation with this team and with Brady for the upcoming season. It's simple to me. You're gonna get you're gonna get about three games better with Tom Brady. 
Are they going to win? Are they going to go 14 and 2? No. Tom Brady's 42 years old. <laughs> but they're going to win games. Mike Evans, Gronk, Godway. Watch out. Seriously, watch out. I mean, he has weapons. We see what happens when Brady is. Brady doesn't have weapons a lot. Hasn't played with Hall of Fame receivers. Hasn't played with Hall of Fame running backs. He hasn't. That's just the truth. But what happened the year he did have the Hall of Fame receiver? What happened the year when he had Randy Moss? He went 16-0. and One, two, play, you know, 18-0. and Didn't lose a game. Giants beat him in the Super Bowl. The miracle. You know, and honestly, and listen, I'm, I, I like Giants. I'm a Giants guy. It was a miracle. It was luck. I'm sorry. It was. It's the truth. I mean, <laughs> come on. David Tyree, the helmet catch. Eli escaping that sack. But my point is, look what happens when Brady actually has weapons. It's scary. And I know he's older, but it's scary. Watch out for Brady this year. Number four, Russell Wilson, one of my favorite quarterbacks in the league. Wins with whatever he has. Whatever he has. Doesn't matter. And give him a bunch of high school football players. He wins. It don't matter what he has. He doesn't need a great running back. He doesn't need great receivers. Just give him a defense that's competent. And Russell Wilson will win you games with Pete Carroll. End of story. I don't have to tell you too much about him. Again, division's tough. Niners are tough. Rams will be better. Cardinals will be better. But Russell Wilson's going to win. He's, he's going to win. You know, you're not going to see Russell Wilson go 6 and 10 this year. 5 and 11, you know, 7 and 9. He's going to win at least eight games and he's probably going to win more. They're probably going to win 11 or something again. Home field ridiculous. You can pretty much count seven wins off the bat there. You really you can. So it's tough for them. It's tough for Wilson not to perform at a high rate and for the team not to win a lot of games when you have that in your back pocket right there. So that's where we're at with Wilson, you know. Um, and honestly, just a great dude. How do you not root for Russell Wilson? Says the right things. It's just it's such a good system. that I love watching Seattle. I root for Seattle. They're a team... They're a Super Bowl contender. They are. They are a Super Bowl contender. They had Green Bay beat last year. They sh- they should have been in the NFC Championship against the Niners. In the NFC Championship against the Niners. Not Quite frankly, not Green Bay. Green Bay got off the hook that game. And I myself actually had Green Bay. So I was happy in the moment. But, <laughs> but like I said, we're going to bring some gambling into this show. Um... But they got lucky. You know, Seattle had them. Had them on the ropes. And we see this year in, year out with Russell Wilson, with Pete Carroll. They're always there. They're just there. It's It's got to be annoying if you don't like them. I love them. Number three. So we get to our top three now. Aaron Rodgers. Uh, you know, and... <laughs> He's going to be good this year. He's going to be great. He's got to be pissed. Let's be honest. Why did they draft Jordan Love? Why did they draft him? They don't need him. They need other things. They need weapons. They might have been. The Packers might have legitimately been the worst 13-3 and team of all time last year. The worst 13-3 and team. I didn't even know they, they won that many games. Were they 12? I didn't even know. that no one. The Packers didn't scare anyone. No one was like, oh, my, my Green Bay's coming into town. Even the bad teams were in the games. The Packers did not scare anyone. No one was terrified to go play the Packers last year. Rodgers willed them to a bunch of wins. Matt LaFleur, we don't know if he can really coach. You know, it's hard to tell right away. But they really they need weapons. And A-Rod is awesome. He's a Hall of Famer. He's top three quarterback in the league. Probably the most talented before Mahomes came along. 
And I mean, so he's going to put up numbers. He's going to win games. Tough division, though. I mean, Minnesota, tough team. If you have no weapons and they're on that day, well, quite frankly, if Kirk Cousins is the quarterback and the game's not on a Monday night or a Sunday night, good luck with Minnesota. Tough to beat. Now, if it's a primetime game, it won't be too much of an issue because we all know how that goes for Mr. Cousins. But really, I, I'm not sure about the Packers. And again, I'm, I'm, this has become... This quarterback discussion has become kind of a quick team summary, an opinion of mine, but it it goes it goes to show that Rodgers is going to put up great numbers. He's going to be he's going to be great regardless of what's going on, but I'm not sold on that situation. I am not sold on the Packers at all right now. So, we'll see what we'll see what happens with that. Good home field, you know, but we saw it, this wasn't last year. We saw the year before that he went one and seven on the road. I mean, no one. The Packers right now don't have the personnel to really scare a team. To really, all we could practice like Green Bay's coming to town. Like eh, it's like you, you're kind of like okay, A Rod's coming in, but personnel wise, team wise, like the the Packers aren't great. So you know we're gonna go get them. Number two, Drew Brees. Who knows when his last year is going to be, but he's not regressing. He's awesome. I mean, I'm not going to spend too much time on Drew Brees. We all know Drew Brees is Drew Brees. He's unbelievable talent, unbelievable guy, Hall of Famer, Super Bowl champ. Um, and the situation's good. The only thing really that cha- you, you're going to see the same as last year. The only thing that changes is Brady's in his division. That'll be interesting, you know. That'll be fun to watch twice a year. But every aside from everything else, as far as the Saints go, as far as Drew Brees goes, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. You're going to see, you know, you're going to see Drew Brees doing Drew Brees, and that's going to be awesome and fun to watch. He's he's the top three quarterback in the league. No one's going to say he's not, but I'm not going to sit here and talk for 20 minutes about him, you know, for on, based on the upcoming season. Not much has changed. Drew Brees, Sean Payton, it's going to be uh, what you'd expect, you know. So Brady in the division, that shakes things up. That shakes things up. And quite frankly, Todd Gurley going to the Falcons, too, to a lesser degree, shakes things up. But Brady in the division shakes things up over there. And number one, Super Bowl champ, Super Bowl MVP, and the the most talented quarterback in the league. I, I don't see how anyone argues that. He's fun to watch. He's great. He's young. Patrick Mahomes. Who else? Who's better than Patrick Mahomes? Who can you say this upcoming season? This upcoming season is going to be better than Patrick Mahomes. Oh, this guy is going to be so much better than Patrick Mahomes. Who? Who? Don't give me Lamar Jackson. Don't give me Lamar Jackson. Don't give me Tom Brady. I love Tom Brady. Don't tell me that. No one's going to be better than Patrick Mahomes. And if they are, it's a shock. You can't tell me someone's supposed to be better than Patrick Mahomes this season. This is a clear-cut number one to me. If you still aren't on the Mahomes train after last year, you're never going to be on the Mahomes train, and that's fine. But you just don't you don't want to accept it for whatever reason. And you're wrong, quite frankly. We'll accept any opinions on, on the show, but... If you're not sold on Patrick Mahomes, he just want to suit. Like it's over. The whole, I wasn't sure about him at first either, but it's over now. He's a Super Bowl champ. He's a Super Bowl MVP. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. The division's pretty weak. Andy Reid, great coach. Weapons all around them. Defense is getting better. Not going anywhere. So if you don't like Patrick Mahomes being great, maybe just stick to college football for now. Till uh, till something changes there, but you know that's it. Thanks guys. Thanks for 
Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Um, we'll keep the polls going on Instagram. We'll keep it rolling. I like seeing how you guys vote. It's fun. It's interesting. Um, and let me know, like I said, anything you agree with, anything you disagree with, anything you think I should do for the show. Um, again, we have no no sports betting information, no no picks right now because there's no live sports due to COVID. Um, so that, that'll change as we go along. And the show ran longer than I thought it was going to. Hour and 30 minutes. We did have to cover 32 guys. So it went a little longer. It will be shorter when we're going daily based on the you know the, the daily news with sports or covering a division. It will be shorter. But again, I'll timestamp these videos for you guys so that you know where to look. For example, when you're on the bar on YouTube, I'll have it say, you know, Rogers, Mahomes, Stafford, you know, so you'll know you don't have to watch for an hour and 30 minutes and hop around. So thanks again, guys. This was great. First episode, inaugural episode, so I know it's not perfect yet, you know, far from it. We're kind of winging it right now, but seriously, let us know. Let us know how we did. Um, and that's quite it. That's, you know, that's about it. We'll We'll try to upgrade some stuff as we go along make it better for you guys um but for now just uh keep stay tuned on our instagram and you know youtube all the videos all the episodes will be posted we might go live i haven't i'm not sure what we're gonna do with that yet people people told me go live you know because then you you guys can write during the show to me and i can answer questions and we can have that type of interaction but for now it's just going to be the recorded videos we're not going to go live just yet um if we even do i'm sure we will at some point but for now it, it's this is what we're this is what we're going uh this is what we're going to do so thanks again guys and uh really appreciate it thanks